In this module, you will learn how to develop focused, clear, concise, and complex research questions that will become the anchor point of your research project. By the end of this module, the learner should be able to articulate a clear question or problem and formulate a hypothesis, know how to find the existing body of research relevant to their topic and explain how their project fits, describe how to communicate research questions to their advisor, and recognize how to take feedback from their advisor on their research questions. Before jumping into the lab or starting to build your experiment, you must ensure that you have done the work of establishing your research questions. A common mistake new researchers make is skipping over or shortchanging this step, with the result being a vague or broad research scope. The risks of skipping this step are no defined measure of success, no clear understanding of previous work and therefore risk of rework, and work that is too simplistic in scope. It is important to start with a topic area that is of interest to you as a researcher. Research can take years to complete, and researching an area you are interested in or even passionate about can help you keep focused. Once you know your topic area, you should start doing research to see what the current applications, challenges, or research focus areas in that topic are. This can help you narrow your topic area further. Once your topic area is sufficiently narrowed, start doing a more in-depth analysis of the gaps in research. This is typically done through finding and reviewing peer-reviewed journal articles that discuss research in your topic area. You should analyze the assumptions made and review the future work section in the articles. Through the process of literature review, you can find the questions still left to be answered and focus your research on one of them. In the slides that follow, I will provide examples of how these steps can be implemented to further illustrate this process. Let's walk through an example of how a researcher might go about developing her research questions. Meet Sarah. She is a PhD student in a mechanical engineering doctoral program. She has decided to work in Professor X's laboratory, which focuses on 3D printing. This is great for her because she has an interest in additive manufacturing and Professor X has shown herself to be a good person and a knowledgeable advisor. Sarah told Professor X that she would like to include an aspect of nuclear radiation in her research. Professor X told her that she'd be fine as long as she can find adequate research questions. She recommends that Sarah start doing some preliminary research to see what she can find out. Sarah starts Googling additive manufacturing and ionizing radiation to see what the ongoing research in the field is. She uses ionizing radiation as her search criteria because she isn't sure yet what type of radiation she wants to include in her research. She knows she wants her research to be experimental and focuses her search on 3D printed plastic because that is what her advisor's lab is working on. The process to refine research questions requires a more in-depth review of your current research and an understanding of your research audience. In our next lesson, we will go over in detail how to conduct a literature review. Literature reviews are used in multiple parts of the research process, including developing your research questions. The audience you are going to present your research to can also be a driver in how detailed your research question should be. This process can take weeks, even months, to get a research question or questions that you are ready to share with your advisor. Let's return to Sarah and her work on refining research questions. Based on her preliminary research, Sarah has decided to focus on proton radiation applied to 3D printed plastic. Her advisor uses plastic in his lab and proton radiation has space applications, which she finds interesting. Now she can do further research. She researches the application of protons on plastics, evaluating mechanical properties, 
using Google Scholar, ScienceDirect, and Taylor and Francis. She also enlists the help of her university librarian to ensure she didn't miss any relevant research. Research that is designed for academia, such as dissertations or peer-reviewed journal articles, or a regulated industry, such as drug development or construction, has different criteria and expectations than research designed for the public, like documentaries. This means that how you select your research questions can be impacted by your audience. Since Sarah is pursuing her PhD, she should be considering research questions that focus on issues with an impact on applications, address key questions regarding the scientific and engineering mechanisms that are being evaluated, and ensure there is an interdisciplinary nexus. In short, the research question should explore how variables are impacted by the experiments proposed, why those variables changed, and what were the underlying factors that caused the change. Sarah begins developing her research questions after doing weeks of literature review. She starts out with the question, what are the effects of irradiating 3D printed plastic with protons? But there is more work to be done. She didn't specify what types of effects she would be measuring, what type of plastics she would be irradiating, or the kind of 3D printing she would be using. To further refine her research question, Sarah decides to focus her research on the impact of proton radiation on the tensile and fatigue mechanical performance of fused deposition modeling, or FDM, ABS. The laboratories in her university have the necessary equipment to do the testing, but she needs to find a facility where she can do the proton radiation. Her advisor's lab has the ABS plastic and FDM printers needed to do the research. Now Sarah is ready to meet with her advisor again and share with Professor X the research question she has developed. You should think of meetings with your advisor as dialogue rather than lectures. Your advisor will ask you questions. This is typical of most research and academic cultures. Questioning research is an important part of how researchers engage with each other to further the body of knowledge. It is also okay for you to ask questions of your advisor in return. Some of the reasons your advisor may ask you questions are to ensure you have fully fleshed out your idea or done your due diligence, to seek to understand your research, your research by definition should be researching something new and novel, so you are becoming the expert in your research. That means that you will need to explain what your research is and what your research means to people, your advisor included. And three, guide and train you in the research methodology. Some of the reasons you should ask questions of your advisor during meetings are 1. Provide clarification on a question. Asking clarifying questions can be very helpful during discussions with your advisor and ensures that you understand the intent of the question being asked of you and can better construct your answer. I remember once during my time in graduate school, my doctoral advisor asked me about the connection between the energy of radiation and the dose of radiation. I immediately started writing equations up on the chalkboard and he stopped me. He clarified that he didn't want equations, he wanted an explanation. I had to rethink my approach because as a mathematical learner, to me the easiest way to explain relationships between variables is through equations. It didn't mean that I didn't understand the question or the topic. I just needed to explain to my advisor in a different way. In hindsight, I should have asked him to clarify what he meant by the connection between energy and dose, and if he was inquiring about the mathematical relationship or the conceptual relationship. Two, get a sense of where your advisor thinks you are at in your progress. 
It will be your doctoral advisor that will decide how you are progressing and when you are ready to move on to the next step in the process. Checking in with them on a regular basis can help them gauge where they think you are and can provide clarity to you on what you are doing well and where any gaps may exist. And three, acquire information on a topic or get advice on next steps. When you get stuck or don't know how to do something, you should bring that up to your advisor and ask for their help. Explain what you have done, what you have been able to find out, and what you need from them. This also helps your advisor to know what you know and what you don't know so they can better advise you. When I was preparing to write my dissertation, I reached out to my advisor. I told him that I had never written a dissertation before and wasn't sure what format he wanted it in. I told him that I had reviewed guidance from several academic sources that recommended one format, but I wanted to get his feedback. He in turn recommended I use a different format based on my published journal articles and told me to use his dissertation as a guide. The role of your advisor is to mentor and guide you on your PhD research journey. Keeping them updated with your progress through regular meetings and emails is essential to the process. The advice I have provided assumes that you have chosen a good and emotionally intelligent person as your advisor. Some things to remember when interacting with your advisor are 1. I don't know is an acceptable answer. It can feel very vulnerable at times to be asked questions by your advisor, and you may not always have all the words you need to answer those questions. A lot of times, the answer to these questions will be, I don't know. If you already knew how to do research, you wouldn't need to be getting a PhD. Two, stress and anxiety are normal. Don't be surprised if these types of meetings are initially stressful to prepare for or bring up feelings from previous encounters with other professors that were toxic rather than productive. Knowing that you do not have to question the intent behind your advisor's questions is essential to having a healthy working relationship and successfully completing your PhD. This is why it is important to choose a good and emotionally intelligent advisor. Three, progress over perfection. Progress over perfection is always the best course of action. I would recommend avoiding moving meetings or avoiding meeting with your advisor because you feel what you have isn't good enough or you want to get just one more thing done. Meet with your advisor anyway. Explain in verbal and written format what you have done and what is yet to be done. No research is perfect. There are always going to be struggles and setbacks, ebbs and flows of action. This process is not linear and your advisor should understand that. And four, communicate your struggles and your successes. It is their job to guide you and train you. Now we return to Sarah. Sarah has spent the last few months working to develop her research questions in addition to her classes and work in the lab helping the more senior PhD candidates with their research. She is ready to brief Professor X. She puts together her findings in a PowerPoint presentation and meets with her advisor to discuss her progress on research questions. Some of the scenarios that could occur between her and her advisor are her advisor is evaluating her due diligence in researching whether this topic has been studied before. The last thing you want is to be halfway through your research only to find out that another researcher published on your exact topic three years earlier. Presenting a detailed analysis, synthesizing the literature you reviewed is helpful in communicating to your advisor how you concluded that your research question has not been studied yet. We will cover literature reviews and their analysis in the next lesson. Asking for clarification on your hypothesis and research questions is common. 
you will be presenting a lot of information to your advisor during your meetings, both verbally and in writing. Remember that your advisor is hearing this information likely for the first time. They are thinking about what you are saying, reading your slides, and formulating thoughts and questions all at the same time. Your advisor is checking to make sure that they truly understand what it is that you are going to be studying and ensuring that your research scope is not too broad. It helps to have this clearly outlined in presentation format so that you can refer to it and keep yourself on message. Remember that your research question should address the key questions regarding the scientific and engineering mechanisms that are being evaluated, exploring how variables are impacted by the experiments proposed, why those variables change, and what were the underlying factors that caused the change. Your advisor will want to ensure that you understand not only what's happening, but why it's happening. In the case of Sarah's example, she will need to determine during her experiments if the radiation is impacting the plastic on a chemical level or impacting the physical structure of the 3D printed sample. Expect to meet several times with your advisor just on your research questions. Remember, it is the thing that will anchor your research. Your advisor will want to make sure you have that nailed down before moving on to experimental design. Be proactive in setting up future meetings. It is also a good idea to ask your advisor some questions before ending your meeting to make sure that you fully understand what they are looking for from the next meeting.